Hello and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we'll learn about some advanced concept, and we'll also learn about the SVG vectors, how to work with it, and some of the advanced payload that can be created with the JavaScript code. So you can see right here that we have got this XSS cheat sheet. You can just get this link from the description and now you can see all of these event based texts and it has description attached to it so you can see the resource based here and you will see how this works so we have svg unload right over here which is saying that html context tag injection we'll see how to use this svg vectors in the payload you can see the on mouse over you can see all of these payload over here so you can just go one by one or you can simply go through this lecture so in this lecture we'll see how to make the advanced payload with this website so we'll see these steps to website over here you can simply go to this prompt.yml and go to this zero here which is the first challenge so let's get started so first of all let's get some input so let me just hit some input over here so i'll say hello so hello has been reflected in the values so you know how to now create the payload so as to run your payload so first of all you have to close your values after that you can just open your script so let me just open my script i'll just say alert and give me the message i'll just close my script then you could see there is a prompt that means we can go to the challenge one so let's see in this challenge you can see the function that is going to be executed and you should have guessed that this will just take the input and it will just replace or strip this part so let's see what is happening over here so when i just say hello so hello has been reflected inside this article which was our input right here inside this article tag but when i just say something like script and close this script then this script will be invisible inside this article tag that means there is something to do with this script so there will be so something if i just make the image tag and if i just close this image it will be invisible over here so that means we need to do something in order to make this visible and there comes this csvg unload method it is very important so you can go to this cheat sheet and see that we have something that is svg and it should be unload method so unload is basically going to be the event which will be triggered when all the objects will be loaded so we can just go at the top over here to see for the SPG and you can see this method right over here so you can just go over here and just paste it down so we want to just execute this so i'll just put the colon at the end so SPG is the vector here and the unload will be called when the object is loaded and when i just say SPG alert then you could see we have successfully loaded so let me just go to two now and now let me say hello again so text has been encoded here so let me just run my script so i'll just say script so it is visible over here if i say alert and one and if i just run script again then you could see that this opening parenthesis has been invisible over here so it has been just invisible that means we need to do something encoding so as to give these parenthesis so here you can see this escape method has been called in this input whatever input it has and it will just replace this opening parenthesis with empty string that means we need to encode this opening parenthesis so i have this website here that is web encoding utility so for the opening parenthesis you have this encoding so let me just take all of this and just go over here and just paste it instead of this opening parenthesis 
but you could see that instead of just executing the alert or the prompt message it has reflected the plain message over here so if it is the case that you get the plain message then you have to use svg vector so you could see that when i just type here svg it has got us a prompt so you would wonder why this svg has been used so i got some important information online here in the stack exchange so this is pretty much what it explains about the svg vector so you could see that the script tag has this c data element so that means this any field which is this opening that is angular bracket at the rate and basically this and character everything has been encoded basically you can see this is the encoded form in this script but in the case of a svg which is uh, the script in the svg is basically the xml terms that means the element svg script is the svg namespace that means the svg script element is the namespace which are different element that means it do not need to be encoded so everything over here was a plain text if it was not svg but svg will not do encoding it will simply put same as here so if i just pass this that is opening parenthesis it won't parsed or it won't get encoded it will simply remain the opening parenthesis because the concept of c data element is only in the sgml world that this html has developed so you must remember that one thing if plain text has been the output then you need to just pass svg which is our vector if if plain text has been reflected in the source that you can see here in the html source it has the plain text over here in that case it should be svg vector because in the svg world this encoding is simply not done that means it won't be parsed it will remain the opening parenthesis so we have just successfully made to the execution of the uh, two challenge two let's go to the challenge three so we have now the challenge three let's see what it happens over here so when i just say hello so when i just say hello it has been reflected in this part which is in hello and it is inside this comment so you could simply see we have written everything and it was inside this uh, the basically what we say this is the comment in the html so first of all we have to close this comment so for that i have to first of all close this comment and when i just encode when i just see something that when i try to close this then it has been replaced with underscore you can simply see over here so we need to just close or just break out this comment with this closing so we are now out of this comment so after that instead of hello we have to open again the svg vector with unload so unload is basically a event that is going to be triggered when all the object is loaded that means this svg is the vector that will just see this information if you want to get more knowledge about the svg vector but it is simply going to be called when there is a plain text so if the html source is showing the plain text you need to just pass the svg vector and on the unload i can simply prompt or you can also pass the alert message and you'll say you win over here you won so this can be the message over here so next one is the fourth challenge so here i'll just see some of the method right here so it is going to just get the sample script so whatever we just pass here so let me just pass instead of this test as yes i'll just pass this much link and let's see what is happening over here it is a simple challenge by the way so let me just paste it down here so 
it is showing that the link is injected inside this src so if you remember we have learned about this in the javascript basic section where this src was to load the external javascript so if you just get all of this link and let's paste it down here then you will see that test.js is loaded so this is the way to load the external file to this current document with this link over here inside this src attribute so let's go for the challenge 5 so let's do something over here so i want to say hello so when i say hello it has been reflected in the field so this is the way where you can see something is inside this value field so if i just make my simple payload which is my script and if i just say alert and one and again close my script tag then you could see something is happening over here this payload or anything that you write in this field has inserted inside this value as a string so it is reflected inside this string so first of all we have to change its type so i'll just make close first for this value field now value field has been closed after that i want to put another external value and after that i want to put external attribute over here which is the type and if you remember this type is a attribute of this input field so i want to give the type i want to say the image i want to say image because we want to make use of image field now and we see something like on error so on error is the event which is going to be load when the there is no image found in the src so in this case i want to load this prompt or you can also say the alert message and i'll just say one so what happened here is basically we created the type image which is here and let me just hit enter and it is not executed because the type has been here image and on src and it should be on error it will get the prompt of one so what happened here was we just didn't give maybe this one so you can see the prompt over here that is u1 so what we just did here was we just changed the type from the text to the image and in the image attribute we have the event that is on error so this will be triggered when this image field won't get any src so here src is empty that means this on error will be triggered which will give us a prompt of one and you can see u1 over here so let's go for another challenge here so instead of that for this so you can also make other certain versions so you can also make use of on resize attribute and this can be made with prompt of one let me enter again it is not working okay let me see on resize and okay i'll just say on input and let's see on input it must work but on input and let's go over here and the prompt of one it must work but it is not working so let's just stick to the basics so here we are just getting the prompt from the image because we want to change from this text to the type which will be image which is simply doing first of all we'll just close our value and we'll just change our type to image 
and src because image tag has the src and on error which will be triggered when there is the error in the image then it will just prompt me one then you can see u1 over here you can also say alert instead of prompt and you will see the alert box over here so let's go for the challenge six so we have long escape method over here so let's see what it is doing so instead of just see what it is doing let's go and see hello over here so it is saying invalid data so this following would do something like a redirection let me see okay so it is saying for bit javascript let's do something like javascript which is the way to inject some prompt so i'll just say prompt prompt is basically the alert and one and let me see has and give the actions so in order to give the actions i'll just make use of this curly braces and this action should be okay this action is the attribute over here and i'll just pass true to this action then it will show us that is u1 so what we did over here was dumb clovering so dumb clovering can strike in the various situations so it is the way to interact or influence a website html so we just made use of a dumb clovering to interact with the websites so it is very much problematic and there is two groups of attribute we can see we have the name here and basically name attributes and we also have the id attributes depending on which html they are being used with an attacker can override this property disable the function so in here we made the actions to be enabled so depending on which html and uh, disable or enable and influence the javascript logic so best way to just get around is not to allow this name or the actions id attribute in user controlled html content in this case we made use of this actions attribute to be just replaced with this prompt so that means we just made use of dumb clobbering we just assess the elements of the html to just inject our own code of this prompt so this will be wrap for this lecture we'll just continue with upcoming challenges in the upcoming lecture see you in the next one